Ladies, gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome along to Make, Repair, Recycle and the start of a series of videos about DIY sim racing wheels. I've been using steering wheels and pedals for probably the best part of 10 years and in that time, you know, sim racing has become more popular, uh, a lot more involved, uh, this, the sim experience, the engineering behind it, the graphics. Um, have all got better and I'm, you know, during the COVID-19-2020 crisis um, has become pretty popular indeed in mainstream sports channels now showing sim racing and to be fair on certain races you can't really tell the difference um, quality of driving at times leaves a bit to be desired but never mind so I've had a Fanatec uh, GT3 RS wheel and pedal set for some years and the, the steering's gone the, the, the feedback's not what it used to be. Took the motor out, cleaned it, looked at it, and I think it's had its day. Um, so I thought I'd investigate looking into building my own. Now there are plenty of things online showing you how to you know, buy various bits and put it together. There are some people that make DIY kits using servo motors and um, stepper motors uh, and again you're just looking at several hundred pounds which is still slightly outside my budget for what i want to do here so what i found on the internet and the lovely man um ebols maggie um has written um a cracking little piece of software that you can take a leonardo arduino board with a motor controller and the motor of your choice and mechanically put it together with an encoder um to give some feedback now this is a journey. I am not an electronics wizard. I have a little bit of a background in making stuff, and I mean that benchtop power supply being one of them. Um, that was a PC ATX power supply. That will, I think this one may well eventually be in the 12 volt supply for the motor for this, but we'll see. So this is step one, and where I wanted to get to first was to get the bits together to actually make sure ele electrically, electronically, electrically. Um, I can put this together and at least in theory it's going to work. I didn't want to go and make the whole thing, do the mechanical stuff, to find I'm stumped with the electronics. Because then it would have been probably thrown out the window. So, what we have here is a Leonardo Arduino board. Now I've just connected this to breadboard for now, just to make the pin connections a little bit easier before we wire anything up properly. This is then interestingly connected. That's holding not too bad for me. Um, to a rotary encoder. Now the Arduino board I think cost me about £10 off eBay. The motor controller I think that was about £10 off eBay. The Omron, where is this? The Omron Focus. No, you're not going to do it, are you? The Omron Blurry E6B2CWZ. 6c um that was about 30 pounds off ebay now these i believe this is a chinese copy to be fair why aren't you focusing um so the, the uh, that was about 30 pounds i think it's a chinese copy because on the on the real ones i think are several hundred pounds this is a thousand pulse um encoder which means that for every, I believe, for every revolution there is a thousand pulses, which means you've got a thousand divisions of 360 degrees. So this is probably more accurate than what's on the back of the motor in the Fanatec. In fact, I know it's more accurate than what's on the back of the motor on the Fanatec. The, the divisions, I think there's probably about 10, 20 divisions on the back of the Fanatec motor. Um, so this should be significantly more accurate. Now, so the bits for all this were relatively cheap. Um, the motor you can see in the background is taken from a kid's electric scooter my son um, had one for christmas a few years ago the battery died it got thrown in a corner so the motor and the, the sprocket and the chain i'm going to recycle for sort of let's call it version 1.0 of this sim wheel that could be later replaced for um, a bigger motor it could be belt drive um, the nice thing about doing it like this is you can upgrade bits as you go along. You're not throwing, you know, a thousand, twelve hundred euros into a, a Fanatec podium, which I'm sure is a very, very nice wheel. But for that kind of money, I could buy a car. Um, 
which is one of the things leveled against sim racing that you can spend as much money on this stuff as you could probably cheaply going proper racing. So here is a brief run through of how this has been wired for the absolute novice. Yeah, it would have been helpful if I had something like this when I did it. So maybe it might be useful to somebody else. So there are lots of wiring diagrams on the internet of how this is connected together. But here is a brief uh, explainer. So Arduino Leonardo board is connected to the laptop, in this case, through this blue cable. That supplies power to the board and is the communications link between the board and the laptop. On, let's start down this side. On the left hand side, you'll see there's a row of uh, pins marked power. I'm using 5 volts and ground into this breadboard, which then connects to the rotary encoder. So, black wire ground, red wire positive 5 volts. Uh, that positive 5 volts is then taken into the rotary encoder together with the ground. If we look at this, if you'll focus, yes, it's working. So, outputs from the encoder are then output A, which is black, output B, which is white, output Z, which is orange. Now, so we've got, if I can separate these, black, white, and orange coming out. Now, all I've done is just, I could have jumped these straight into the board, to be fair, but I didn't know whether I might need to use something else in between this, but it seems to work for now. So, these three go in the board, which you don't have to do, you can go straight into the uh, Arduino. So these are connected to, let's see if I can work this out. So orange is connected to pin six. And orange is, focus, output Z. You've then got white and black, which are connected into the TX RX. And that is then will be your output. Come on, focus output A and B. So they're all plugged in there. Now, what I've also wired up, which I haven't tried yet because it's not all connected, um, is a 5 volt lead and the communications link from the Arduino to the motor controller. And a uh, brief explanation motor controller is a way of using low voltage power in this case 5 volts and some signal connections being the the brown and the purple wire they're connected into the the uh, motor controller and this is a way of then something low voltage powering something higher voltage higher current without blowing this board up this the uh, arduinos are only really rated for milliamp levels of current whereas this i think is rated at something like 43 amps it's quite quite beefy as you why there's a giant heat sink on the back of it as well so in the future when this is mechanically connected and we turn the wheel the motor then puts a corrective the force feedback through the shaft in the wheel the software then knows where the wheel is because of the uh, rotary encoder so then the software can try and say well i'm holding it at 10 degrees but the game wants to put it at 15 or 5 and then it puts force into it that will come from this motor, which is, as, as I said, it's taken from a scooter. Um, it's 12 volt, 100 watts. Whether that's enough, I don't know. It may not put, put any more output than, than my old Fanatec, but the nice thing we're doing this way is it's modular. I can bin that off, get myself a big stepper motor, and play with that. So, those are all the parts. The next thing you have to do is talk to the nice man at eballs maggie and uh, if you cross his palm with 10 us dollars he will send you the software files that will make all this work now i go to the right file so basically what you will get from him is the hex file which is the file that goes into the arduino that that makes it work and the utility uh, which is effectively the app that makes the thing work. Now, I struggled with this yesterday because, I, again, I'm a complete novice at this stuff. I read some stuff that seems to me to be fairly straightforward. Um, but one thing I didn't realise is to upload the hex file, um, there's a software program that somebody's written called Xloader, and effectively it takes the coding file, the hex file, takes it from the computer, and puts it into the Leonardo. 
Now, what I didn't realise, I mean, this utility is fairly straightforward. Um, you tell it where the hex file is, you tell it what device it is and what COM port it's on. But what I couldn't get it to, it, couldn't, it wouldn't read the thing. It wasn't writing to the right port, it wasn't going. So you can put in the file and it just wasn't working. So, But what I hadn't realised is that on the Leonardo board there is a reset button. Just at the back there. If you double press that very quickly, it goes into bootloader mode. The L light comes on at the back, and that then allows you to upload the program. Now, there's quite a few little tutorials of doing this type of sim wheel online. They just say, upload the program, use Eclo. It doesn't tell you that button. So, anyway, the nice man, E Balls Maggie, showed me how to do that. So, where we've got to today is what I'm going to do now is that's that's the utility EMC utility. I'm going to plug the Leonardo back in. Windows will then go ping and recognise it. And if we open the utility, famous last words, all of the lights are now flashing on the board, which is lovely. And if you draw your attention to the steering wheel centre on there. As I rotate the rotary encoder, the steering wheel moves back and forth. This was quite a moment yesterday. This was quite exciting. This means electronically, electrically, electronically, this is now talking to the computer. And as I rotate this around, Although, as we can see, this is actually inverted. But the nice thing, as I turn it left, it's going right. Not good for driving. So if I just click the invert steering button, thunk, there we go. It will now go left and right. So, not a huge amount to talk about this one. There are various diagrams, and I will put links in the description to e -Bowls, Maggie, and how you wire this together. It's quite frankly if I can do it I think anyone can do it the next job with this is to then clear all this away and mechanically come up with a way of coupling this motor to this sprog sprog sprocket come on wake up connect this motor to this sprocket with that chain now and, and then we can put the rotary encoder on the back of the shaft that then uh, shaft there we go shaft so, on the end of this will be, at some point, steering wheel on this end, hub, probably a couple of bearings about here, sprocket will be somewhere in the middle, connected to the motor, and on the back of it, down this end, will be the rotary encoder. So as you turn the wheel, or the wheel is turned for you, the rotary encoder knows where it is. So, that's step one. Next video, we'll move on to step two, and hopefully, there may be something that loosely resembles a steering wheel with all of this stuff connected to it.